Ready to level up your app and start making money? Let me show you how to add full Stripe integration to your Vibe Coding project. Create a premium fan club for your most dedicated users and set up subscriptions that unlock gated features. All with just a few clever AI prompts. Let's go! Hey, Alex here from Grit AI Studio. If you've been following our series, last time we added user authentication with email and password, plus a simple donate button using Stripe payment links. That was just the beginning. Today, we're taking things to the next level by implementing full Stripe checkout integration with webhooks and a customer billing portal. This allows us to create sustainable revenue for our app while giving premium members special access and features. In this video, we'll add a complete Stripe checkout flow for one-time payments, membership tracking in our database with Stripe webhooks, and subscription capabilities with recurring billing. And as always, we're doing all of this with the help of Cursor and some clever prompting. Let's dive in. Now let's take our payment integration to the next level with Stripe Checkout. In our previous video, we implemented a simple donate button using payment links, but today we're going to build a more robust solution. Stripe Checkout gives us a powerful, customizable payment flow that we can easily expand later. We'll start with a one-time donation feature, but the beauty of this approach is that we can reuse almost all of the code for subscriptions later by simply flipping the mode parameter. To get us started, let's fire off Cursor with this prompt right here. We're essentially asking Cursor to add a new card to our dashboard for a fan club that our members can join. We want to make use of Stripe checkouts and specifically a Stripe hosted checkout page. We also ask to use something called webhooks to handle successful donations by saving this to the user profile that we have in Superbase. That way we can later give special treatment to our fan club members. I'm also preparing Cursor or GPT-5 in this case for our next moves. In essence, that we want to reuse this later to set up subscriptions in our solution. I finally tag the Stripe documentation and then run the prompt. While Cursor is working on this, let me briefly explain webhooks and how this approach differs from our very simple payment link in our previous video. The payment link allows us to receive payments, but we have no connection to our application and it's not straightforward to link said payment to our users inside of our application. Webhooks are essentially a way for us to receive real-time notifications from Stripe when specific events happen. Think of them as automatic messages that Stripe sends to our application whenever something important occurs, like a successful payment or a failed subscription renewal. In our solution, we'll use webhooks to track when the user joins our fan club by making a payment, allowing us to instantly update their membership status in our Superbase database. This creates a seamless connection between the payment platform and our app enabling us to provide premium features to paying members without any manual intervention. Once Cursor is done, we see that we need to provide a few new environmental variables, such as the Stripe secret key and a webhook secret. We'll also ask Cursor to create the Superbase migrations that we need to expand our user profile to store relevant information about our newly founded fan club. We'll quickly fire that off in Superbase so that everything is ready. In Stripe, we can define products that we can offer in our solution. Let's create a product and a price in our Stripe dashboard. For our fan club, we will let the user donate an amount, so we'll create a one-time price, but keep in mind that when we want to add subscriptions later, we'll just need to create a recurring price. Then with our product setup, we'll ask Cursor for some guidance on how to set up our webhook in Stripe with this product defined. Cursor gives us the steps we need to make in Stripe to configure this properly, including the URL for our webhook route in our app that Cursor has created for us. 
It also instructs us what events that we want to send from Stripe that we'll use to manage things like payments completed by the user. In Stripe, we will simply click webhooks under the developer menu and create a new destination. This will then submit the events in Stripe that we select. Here we select the events under checkout that Cursor told us to listen to. Completed, payment succeeded, and session expired. We will then choose webhook endpoint and paste the URL from Cursor with our domain. Here I'm using my Vercel domain. And that's it. We can then copy the signing secret here and put that in our environment variables. Now, before we dive into the next steps here, let me quickly mention Stripe's test environment. This is super helpful during development because it lets us simulate events and test transactions without moving any real money. Stripe has also recently launched a sandbox environment, which provides even more granular testing capabilities. A sandbox is an isolated test environment that gives you greater control for testing various scenarios. For simplicity in this video, we'll stick with the standard test mode. This will be more than enough to get our payment system up and running while making sure everything works correctly before we go live. To simulate webhooks, you can also use the Stripe command line interface, CLI. Install it and log into Stripe, and then run this command that Cursor provided to us to listen to any of these events, such as checkout session completed. We will then get a testing webhook signing secret that we can use locally when we develop. Put this in your env file and just replace it with your production key when you deploy to Vercel. Now you can do stuff like simulating events without actually doing this in Stripe. That can be very handy when working on your logic locally. Lastly, let us now turn on test mode in our Stripe dashboard and then test this. We can use test cards in test mode, like this one here, 424242 and so on. Let's try it out in our solution. We have a nice new fan club card here. Click the donate form and enter an amount. This then brings us to the Stripe checkout page where we see that we're in test mode. And there you go. We get a thank you for our support. We can check Superbase and see that we're now a fan club member. This change to our profile happened thanks to our webhook and the logic described in the webhook to essentially update our user profile when a successful payment has been made by the user. In our code here for the webhook route, we can see that we check for the event checkout session completed, then fetch the data from the Stripe session and can then use information such as the customer email to check against our user profiles. We then update our Superbase profiles table with information about this member now being a fan club member and their donation amount. We can also check our Stripe dashboard and see the transaction from our test card here. Lastly, we also see the logging in our local webhook that the event was triggered. Okay, so quite a lot going on there, but it's working and we did it all with a few easy prompts. Pretty cool. Let's add one more thing to differentiate our fan club members. Let's add a nice crown to the profile picture of our users and also change the logic of the fan club card on our dashboard once they are a member. Now we can see our fan club member badge and a nice crown on our profile picture. A quick note on the test mode that we're using in Stripe. You need to make sure that you create products in the test environment as well as in your production environment. Here you can see I have a fan club test product in my test environment. As long as I provide that product ID and use that in our solution when testing, I'll see the product on checkout when we test it. And that's it. Now we have a fully working payment solution up and running powered by Stripe. Now that we have our fan club donation system working smoothly, let's take our app to the next level by implementing recurring subscriptions. This is where the real sustainable revenue comes from in your projects. Remember how I mentioned earlier that we designed our Stripe checkout flow to be easily adaptable? That's about to pay off in a big way. The beauty of Stripe's system is that most of our webhook logic already works for both one-time payments and subscriptions. We'll just need to expand it to handle subscription-specific events like renewals and cancellations. Let's dive in and see how easy it is to create recurring revenue streams for our app. Let's jump back into the Stripe portal and create another product, this time for recurring revenue. 
We'll call it gold membership in our test mode and set a monthly price. You can choose between a number of different pricing models. We'll keep it simple and stick with a flat monthly rate. We'll copy the product ID and head over to Cursor. I've started a new chat, so I'll provide a bit more context about what we currently have in our solution with Logic in place for Stripe checkouts and a webhook. Then I'll ask for another card on the dashboard, reusing our Logic to create a premium subscription for our users. I want to create a new webhook route for this, but use the same approach and Logic, and I want a new table in Superbase to handle subscriptions. I'll also say that we have a product set up in Stripe for this subscription. Now Cursor wires up the new routes and Logic. We need to set up another webhook in Stripe for our subscriptions. We'll use the same checkout events, but in addition, we'll also add a few subscription-specific events here under Customer. Subscription created, deleted, paused, and resumed, as well as updated. We'll make use of these later to handle more advanced cases like customers ending their subscriptions and so on. We'll paste in the destination for our webhook route in our app. Instead of fan club, we'll here use our new premium webhook route that Cursor has set up for us. And that's it. Copy the signing secret and we're good to go. Head over to Superbase and run the migration that Cursor prepared for us to set up the new subscriptions table. And that's it. Now we can test the new premium subscription in our app. Hit that subscribe button and we see our Running Mind Gold membership product appear in the Stripe checkout page, priced at $9.99. We'll pay with our test card. And it works. We're redirected back to our app and we see the welcome to premium message on top of our dashboard. You can now do the same as we did with our fan club, add a premium badge and a different card logic once you're a premium member to differentiate members. We see our new premium membership column in Superbase and that our subscription is active. In Stripe, you can look at a product and see how many active subscriptions there are for a given product. You can view the different users and you can test things like cancellations of a subscription and so on. Now that we have our subscription system working, we need to give users a way to manage their subscriptions. This is where the Stripe customer portal comes in. It's a powerful ready-made solution that lets users update payment methods, change subscription plans, or cancel subscriptions without us having to build all this functionality from scratch. And again, they're not paying me to say any of this. I just find it very easy to use. The beauty of the customer portal is that it's completely customizable and seamlessly integrates with our existing Stripe implementation. We can configure it to show only the options that we want our users to have access to, such as updating payment methods when cards expire or are declined, changing between different subscription tiers, if you offer monthly or yearly and so on, and viewing billing history and downloading invoices, and of course, canceling or pausing subscriptions. Let's implement the portal in our app by adding a simple manage billing button to our user profile page. We'll simply ask Cursor to set this up for us and tag the Stripe documentation for reference. We want to generate a secure session link and redirect the user to Stripe's hosted portal using the Stripe customer ID that we've stored in Superbase. Remember that the customer ID in Stripe test mode and production are not the same. This can be a bit confusing, so make sure you clean up any customer IDs from your testing before you go live in production. Cursor does its magic and sets up the new functionality for us. For this to work, we need to enable the customer portal in Stripe. So head over to customer portal under billing and activate the test link. Here you can configure what the user should be able to do in their customer portal. Activate the link and paste the link into Cursor will state that this is the test environment. Now we can use the manage billing link in our user profile page and it'll open the Stripe test mode customer portal, confirm with our email, and there you go. Now we can manage our subscription, view invoices, and cancel our subscription if we want to. Remember to do the same thing in your production environment. Activate the link when you exit test mode and copy the link into Cursor. Both for the customer portal and for the product IDs, just remember when you prompt Cursor that you tell it that we have both test products, 
and production products. And Cursor will sort it out for you. We can now test this out in our production environment. Here, I've given myself a very special price of $1. The portal works, it no longer shows test mode, and I can see my real transactions. So for the final part of this video, let's make sure that we properly handle the most important Stripe events. To make sure we properly handle any changes to a user subscription, failing payments and so on, we need to expand our webhook to listen to these events. We'll of course ask Cursor to help us with a few of the most important cases here. Our code already have a lot of these prepared, but with no logic. So let's ask to expand here. At a minimum, we should monitor the checkout session completed, which we already do. That's the one we use to create the subscription for user in Superbase. The other two we should monitor are invoice paid and invoice payment failed. These will trigger each billing interval when the payment succeeds or if there's an issue with your customer's payment method. When paid, we should continue provisioning the subscription. If it failed, they do not have a valid payment method, which means the subscription becomes past due and we should notify the customer and send them to the customer portal to update their payment information. We should also monitor for canceled or unpaid events, in which case we should revoke access to our premium features. You can do a lot more than this, so check out the Stripe documentation and set up a listener and logic for any event that you want to handle. Cursor adds the handlers for us. If there's an issue with payments, we want to show this to the user and guide them to update their payment information. Okay, so let's try canceling our subscription. It will run until the end of the billing cycle, and I'm asked to give a reason. Now we can see that it will cancel on the 14th of September. If we head back to our solution, we see this banner saying that our subscription is ending, and that we hope they change their mind, guiding them back to manage their subscription. We can then click don't cancel, renew our subscription, and now all is good again. And finally, when you commit your changes and deploy to Vercel, if you followed our steps in the previous videos, remember to add the new Stripe environment variables for this to work. And just like that, we've gone from a simple donate button to proper payment management and subscriptions in our app. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button and subscribe to follow the full build series. Oh, and make sure you check out our Vibe Code community on school in the description below. I'll see you in the next one.